So do you see that house in the background? Do you see how unique it is? Well, River has launched one of their unique scooters, the River Indy. We are near on the hills right now to see what River has launched, their new addition to the electric market. And here is the Indy electric scooter. And let's take a look at this scooter up close. Welcome to Drive Spark. My name is Vedan Johar. When we look at the River Indy up close, we see a design that we haven't seen in any scooter industry, not in the electric segment, not in the ICE segment. Personally, it really stands out. I love the design of the scooter. Right from the square headlamps that we see, all the way to the side profile and even the rear, the River Indy has a really, really nice design to it. So now looking at the front end up close, apart from the dual square headlamp, we see these sleek indicators in front, a very traditional look that we haven't seen in any of the later scooters. So then on top of the headlights, we have these two strips, which don't really serve a purpose, but again, as to the aesthetic of the scooter. Also, we have a the river badging over here in a very nice font, in a very unique font again. Also, in the uh, front portion of the scooter, we have these guardrails over here. Again, we don't, we haven't seen this in any other scooter. It's a very unique feature. Instrument cluster that we see is so, sort of like a floating one as there's not Nothing really supporting it at the back. It, when you look at it from the front angle, it adds again nice touch to the whole design aspect of the scooter. Coming to the side profile of the scooter, we have the Indy badging over here. We have these foot pegs that can also come that are also inbuilt to the body design that can also be open for the rider's comfort. It will be more comfortable keeping your legs stretched out and like giving yourself a more upright seating position. It also does come with the traditional footboard that we see on the everyday scooters. Now moving along the side, we also have these inbuilt uh, rear foot pegs and uh, these come with a really good grip on them to avoid slipping off. Let's say you don't see a bump on the road or something and if you have a pillion. Also the guardrails at the back are super unique. It's this square shape that sort of juts out. However, it does look that it can be put back inside. However, it can't. Other than it being a guardrail, it can also be used as a grab rail as it's positioned quite perfectly for someone at the back to actually pull you out of situations or if the scooter is not moving or something like that. We also have this fuel tone finish, the black and the yellow that we see over here. Also, on the black piece at the bottom, we see air vents, one in the center and in the front, which possibly could be to cool the battery as it is a flow mounted battery and the vents give you direct access to the main battery that's located in the scooter. Coming to the rear section of the scooter, first and foremost, the river badging that we see in the front is also located at the rear. I really, really love how they've done the uh, logo of river. Also, at the back, we have one more grab rail, but this is not just a grab rail. It also has mounting points over here to add a rear rack if need be, if you need more storage in the scooter. Also, the side guard rails and grab rails can also be used to add on accessories if you need more storage, if you just want your scooter to look bigger. The rear tail lamp that we see is a rectangular finish and has been put in place in a sort of curved fashion. Now uh, this is one more feature on the river that we haven't seen in any other uh, electric vehicle or ICE vehicle for that matter. Having such a large tail lamp will really help in night drives or in low visibility conditions as it will illuminate the scooter and you will be able to see it from a really far distance. So on normal scooters or even uh, motorcycles for that matter, for the tail lamps we normally see a very thin LED strip. Whereas over here, we see a more thicker one, a more pronounced one, making visibility much more easier, making the, just illuminating the whole back end of the scooter much stronger. That is a really good safety feature that they've put in the River Indy. Rear indicators that we see are also like the traditional indicators coming out of the body panel instead of being a part of it. Then we also have reflectors over here, again, for safety. If you're riding in height, if the slightest height will reflect off this. So that's one more nice safety feature that Rivers uh, has put into the Indy. So before coming to the much awaited specifications, let's take a look at the storage space. Your undersea storage, you get 43 liters of boot space. Now that is something we have not seen. As you can see, we fit a full bag and a full-faced helmet comfortably inside this. It fits with 
ease. You don't need to struggle. You don't need to try pushing it in or anything. So that is a really, really good feature. We also have a front glove box. So here we have 12 liters of storage space. And on top of that, we have a USB mount inside and we have a lever on the side to open your charging port. Here is where you have to charge the River Indy. Again, a pretty convenient place to keep your charging port other than like the rear or, or anywhere else. So now this was all the storage space in the River Indy that comes with the stock vehicle if you don't go for any upgrades. And now coming to the specifications. The Indy is powered by a 4 kilowatt hour battery that can put out a continuous power of 4.5 kilowatts and a maximum power of 6.7 kilowatts. Really fun to ride and it comes with three riding modes, Eco, Ride and Rush. For the range, we get around 161 claimed by the IDC, but on Rush mode, you can get around 70 kilometers on ride around 90 and on eco around 120. But again, all these figures really matter based on each one's riding style. If you're very happy on the throttle, your range is gonna go. Whereas if you're more gradual, if you're a calmer rider, you your range will increase. Also, it gets regenerative braking. With So when you're braking, it does charge the battery as much as it can. Again, helping that slight boost in range, that slight, it gives that slight support to the battery and just hopes that it does better. When we talk about the ride feel of the scooter, it comes with a relatively soft suspension setup. On the front, we have twin telescopic suspensions and on the rear, we have twin coil spring suspensions. As I said, it is on the softer side of things, but it still gives you a really smooth ride. Even when you're going really fast, the top speed of the scooter is 90. And when you're on full throttle doing 90 kilometers per hour, you still do feel stable. You don't feel like you're bouncing around too much or anything. So they have done the suspension setup really well. However, there could be slight tweaks on it to even give confidence while cornering hard and stuff like that. Also, the turning radius of this is something I am truly shocked about. It just keeps turning, keeps turning, and it can take this full road that we're on in one shot without having to stop, take it back and turn it again. Really, really good on river for including that aspect on this. So now coming to the tires of this. At the front, we get 14 inches and we get 14 inches on the rear as well. But the front size is a 110 by 70 and on the rear, we get a 120 by 70. And all the braking is done through a combi braking system. Disc brakes in the front, we get 240 mm in the front and 200 mm in the back. Pretty good for a scooter. You don't need anything bigger because the scooter can't do speeds more than that. Coming with a combi braking system with 14 inch tires, it all adds up into a very comfortable, a very confident braking scenario on the river in the air. When we take a seat on the River Indy, I'm 6'1", so much legroom in front and you don't feel cramped up, your handles are placed pretty comfortably where it's not like where you're up front like this, it's a comfortable seating even for a taller person like me. Using the highway pegs, you get even more comfort, I don't know how that's possible but you get much more comfort, you have a, a more pronounced seating position on this. You honestly feel like you're on a cruiser of scooters when you're sitting on the River Indy using the highway pegs. The seat comfort also, after you're riding for like a few kilometers, you won't even realize you're sitting on a scooter seat. It has a lot of cushioning, a lot of padding, just making it, just adding to the ride feel altogether. For whatever short distance I got to ride the scooter, I had fun. It wasn't the most powerful, it's not made to be the most powerful. This is a commuter scooter. So it does have the power when you need it. And all in all, the maneuverability, the control, using the different buttons located on the handlebar, everything is very convenient. There's nothing that is out of place. And even if you need to charge your phone on the run, if you're using something else in the front glove box, you have one more USB socket located underneath the handlebar which can be used and you have this empty space over here which could be used to add a phone mount or something everything just adding up into the whole commuter aspect of scooters the price of the river indy the indy comes at a price of rupees 1,25,000 x showroom and it's available in three color options 
One is the yellow that you see here. Another is a blue and the third is a red. All super eye-catchy colors suiting the newer generation of people. So all in all, this was the River Indy and this was a short ride review on it. So stay tuned for when we get the scooter in our hands to do a proper long-term review where we can see the actual range of the scooter on the various modes and how it performs day to day on daily commute to work or wherever or to the grocery shop or something. So please do like, share and comment down below what you think of the River Indy. This is Vedan Johari signing out.